Creativity is a hobby, not a business. No, I will not find clients to work for. Come on, I can't charge money for something if I'm having fun doing it. There is so much competition that I just won't stand out. I don't want to be a sellout. I want to be authentic. <laughs> it's too late to change my career now. Oh no, I'm not good enough yet to charge for my creativity. Nobody needs what I have to offer anyway. I won't be able to make enough money with creativity. If I'll monetize my creativity, I will hate it. Whoa, 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 whoa. This needs to stop. Too many creative people are stuck in boring corporate jobs, exchanging their precious lifetime for some mediocre amount of money while doing something meaningless to them. Too many talents are wasted. Too many creatives don't even believe that they're worthy of a better life. I've heard many people say things like, the only way to pursue creative passion is to have a day job and do the creative stuff in the free time. But we all know how that ends, don't we? We don't have enough time and energy to pursue our creative stuff because we give away our best energy to jobs that we don't even like. There are other ways to pursue creative passions. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my step-by-step -step guide of becoming a freelance creative. This is one of the ways that I've chosen and it has been working for me. So I'm gonna speak about something that I know well, but it's not the only way. So if you wish to share something that has worked or has not worked for you in the comments down below, I believe that our community of creative people who wanna live better would benefit from that greatly. So feel free to share your story in the comments under this video. And you just might wanna stay tuned till the end of this video for a giveaway of one year of free online courses. Just stay tuned, just stay tuned. Hi, my name is Dancy. I'm a product photographer and a content creator. I work with brands creating visuals for their social media and websites. I've been a freelancer for five years already. I used to live in Prague and now I live in the Canary Islands. I used to work in a corporation and now I'm self-employed. And let me tell you, working in a corporation was not beneficial for my self-worth. Being a tiny little part of this huge corporate machine didn't help me feel like I can make a difference. I was an easily replaceable, unimportant and insignificant part of it. One out of 40,000 people. And I've always known that I'm destined to make a big difference in my own little world. Big difference in my own little world, okay? I'm not a wonder woman. I'm a creative person, you know, so I constantly feel the desire, no, the need to create something, to process my life through the lens of creativity. And if I don't create or can't create, I start losing the desire to leave. It's like this fire within myself is just dying out. And creative projects are like these wooden logs that I'm throwing into the fire of existence. And YouTube, YouTube is this big, fat, wet log that I threw into the fire a few years ago and it's just getting dry there. I cannot wait for it to burn, for it to light up, for it to make my fire go crazy. But for now, it's just hanging in there, you know, it's just hanging in there. Fuck, fuck. I couldn't get rid of the feeling that my corporate job was a golden cage. A shiny job title, an above average salary, corporate benefits, it all felt good to have at first. And then I started feeling like a big puzzle piece was missing from my life. Because at the end of the day, I wasn't fulfilled. I was wasting my time doing something meaningless to me. The work I was doing wasn't changing the world in a way that I wanted. It was only supporting industries that are destroying our planet. Now, as a YouTuber, I'm on a mission to help creative people design a better lifestyle for themselves. And as a product photographer, I work with natural, sustainable, cruelty-free, female-owned brands, and I help them make a difference I want to see in the world. The change that I went through was only possible because I worked on my mindset. So the first step in my guide of becoming a freelance creative is adopting a growth mindset. A growth mindset is a concept developed by psychologist Carol Dweck. Now let's delve a little bit deeper into it. I'll share with you some characteristics and some examples from my life. The first characteristic is embracing challenges. People with a growth mindset tend to see challenges as opportunities for growth rather than as threats. The lockdown of 2020 has been a great challenge for many, but it's during that time I became a freelancer and I started taking product photos in my bedroom. The second characteristic is persistence. Individuals with a growth mindset are more willing to put the time and effort in required to improve the skills and their abilities. Becoming good at photography requires a lot of persistence and the biggest challenge is closing the gap between what you've envisioned in your head and what you're capable to create with your tools and resources in real life. 
The third characteristic is viewing effort as essential. It's this understanding that even people with a natural talent have to work hard to refine and develop their skills. Actually, for a few years, I couldn't accept a compliment that I am talented. I would always reply something like, thank you, but I'm also very, very skilled. Just because I didn't want people to dismiss the hard work that I'm putting into my career and I didn't want them to think that it all comes naturally to me. Characteristic number four is learning from criticism. People with a growth mindset tend to see feedback, positive or negative, as an opportunity to grow and improve rather than as a judgment of their abilities or a personal insult. Honestly, it used to be quite hard to receive any criticism or negative comments from my clients because it felt like a personal insult. But when I realized that this aspect of mine is standing in the way of me and financial success, I decided to work on it and I decided to learn how to remove myself from my creative output after pouring myself into it. Let's just say it took some time to learn that, but it has brought amazing results and I started producing even better work. And characteristic number five is being inspired by the success of others. Instead of being threatened by it, individuals with a growth mindset see that as an inspiration, as something that's available for them as well. I don't think it's possible to stop comparing ourselves to others because it's in our human nature, but I think it's possible to stop feeling like a failure when we do so. As soon as I realized that success is not a limited resource, that there is enough success for everybody in this world, I started feeling more and more inspired by the success stories of others. And instead of feeling like a failure, I felt like, hmm, I can do that. If they could do it, I could do it. Equipped with this mindset, we can move on to the second step of the guide. The second step in my guide of becoming a freelance creative is picking a skill to monetize. If you don't know which creative skill to monetize yet, chances are you're going through one of these two scenarios. A. You have so many skills, passions, hobbies and interests that you're just overwhelmed and you don't know which creative skill to focus on and which one to monetize. Or B. None of your creative skills is at the level yet when you can charge for it and have income. I actually went through both of these scenarios. So this is how I decided to choose product photography. I became a social media manager. This is a super flexible job. I was able to do it while working full-time in a corporation and studying in the university at the same time. I found this job through a friend and I think a lot of us have a friend of a friend of a friend who is starting up a business and might need help with their social media. And most importantly, social media management requires a lot of skills like photography, videography, design, web design, community management, communication, copywriting, influencer marketing, ad campaigns, and so much more. So I was able to try myself in a lot of the different skills and figure out what I enjoy doing most, in which areas I'm most talented and skilled in, and what's in demand right now. And for me, it happened to be product photography. I recognize that becoming a social media manager is not the answer for everyone, but I would recommend you to find a flexible job, a part-time job or an internship in the industry that you're most interested in so that it will be easier for you to choose which one of those skills to monetize because you will have this real life application example. Right after I chose product photography, I realized that my skills are not at the level yet where I can call myself a specialist. So for brands, it was much more cost-effective to hire a content creator or a social media manager, a person who does everything, including product photography, rather than me. So I needed to improve my skills so much that it would be a no-brainer for brands to hire me because the results they would get from my product photography would outweigh the costs of hiring me. If you want to improve your skills, there is no way easier and more affordable than joining Skillshare. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community and you can gain there all the necessary skills to become a freelance creative, business skills and creative skills from marketing, freelancing and entrepreneurship to photography design and illustration. And I have amazing news for you because I'm giving away one year of free learning on Skillshare to one of my fellow creators. Here is what to do if you want to get a chance in winning one year of free learning on Skillshare. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment under this video sharing what you want to learn. What you want to learn, just let me know and that's it. The winner is going to be announced in the community post on my channel on the 9th of April. You might as well turn the notification so you won't miss that. And right now, if you just want to test Skillshare, if you want to see what's available on it for you, click the link in the description under my video and you will get 30-day free trial of Skillshare. 
Step number three in my guide of becoming a freelance creative is building a portfolio. And many people seem to be confused about this. It's like the chicken or the egg problem. How can I have a portfolio if I don't have clients yet? How can I have clients if I don't have a portfolio yet? Well, the answer is really simple. You don't need clients to build a portfolio. Your first portfolio is your business investment. As an aspiring product photographer, I invested into my first five portfolio projects. I invested in props, products, background, studio equipment, because I wanted to create a portfolio that will showcase to my potential clients what I'm capable of. And I wanted my portfolio to showcase the work I want to be hired for. And it's a really big misconception to think that professional, successful, super experienced photographers do not invest their own money into projects. That's just false. When you work with clients, you have guidelines, you have deadlines, you have requirements, feedback. The work is very structured, but when you're driven by creativity, you wanna experiment, you don't know how it's gonna turn out, and you pour yourself into a project. And that ends up to be the project that brings you the client of the next level. So unless you're ready to invest your time, energy, and money into your freelance business, in your portfolio, in your education, my videos won't help you. My guide won't help you because then it's a hobby, not a business. You really need to believe in yourself and in what you do to be able to invest your resources like that so that you will always know no matter what happens, it's gonna be worth it. Step number four in my guide is figuring out the legal stuff. And don't worry, we are not opening up a business just yet. We are only learning about how to do that. Because when a client comes with a project that's only possible to do if you have it official, you don't want to be overwhelmed by the idea of opening up a business and working on their project at the same time. You want to have the answers to all of the questions in advance. Every country has different regulations, so you need to figure this out for yourself, read blogs, book a consultation, talk to your fellow freelancers in your community, and figure out how to open a sole proprietorship, how to run a business as a freelancer, how much it costs, how you, can you apply for it, what documents you need, how long it takes to open up a business in your country. You also need to figure out what are the monthly payments that you will need to do to keep your business running. And of course, you need to figure out the taxes, how much are they, when do you need to file them, do you have any benefits on that, and so on. So equipped with those answers, we can finally start searching for clients. But before I share with you a few ways on how to find clients, I want to bring to your attention a few challenges that you can encounter as a freelancer. Let's dive deep into those first. The biggest challenge is that you will not have the same amount of money on your bank account every month. In fact, there may be some months when you will not make any profit at all. As a freelancer, you're in control of how much money you make. And for some it's freedom, and for others it's a burden. For example, product photographers have more work in October and November because they're working on Christmas campaigns, while January is just... Nobody wants anything in January. I've had many months when I didn't make any profit, but then I've learned to diversify my income. Another challenge is that you will have to balance your lifestyle and create your own schedule. Again, it's freedom for some and a burden for others. When I started freelancing, I definitely used to work 24-7 quit my 9 to 5 to work 24 7 ha 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 yeah exactly that was me i believed that the more i work the harder i work the more hours i put in the farther i can go but i forgot about the burnout in freelancing, there is no straightforward promotion plan, no career ladder to climb. On top of that, creative industry is really hard to navigate and very vague because there is a lot of gatekeeping. I really hate gatekeeping. I had to figure all of these things out on my own through experience, but I'm happy to share everything I know with you. And if you appreciate the effort, give this video a thumbs up. The final step in my guide of becoming a freelance creative is finding clients. I just want you to understand that being a creative freelancer is not just doing the creative work, it's also finding creative ways to do your business. So in this video, I'm going to mention just a few ways that have worked for me to find clients and you let me know in the comments if you want a full length in detailed video about each of the mentioned methods. The first method is called outreach. It's when you're reaching out to people and brands that know nothing about you, you show your portfolio, client reviews and offer your services to them. The second method is is building a personal brand online and showing your behind the scenes of projects and your portfolio and client reviews and a little bit of your life as well. You're establishing yourself in the niche so that your clients are coming to you through your social media channels. 
Method number three is to run ads for your services. You can run them on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Pinterest, Google, anywhere you want. Method number four is to find job offers directly from brands when you're following them on social media or checking out their websites, especially the career section at the bottom of the website. You can see that they're looking for you. Method number five is to find job offers on websites like LinkedIn, Indeed, and Glassdoor. Even though the majority of offers there are for full-time employees, Employment. You can still find offers for freelancers and part-time employment. And regardless, you can offer your services as a freelancer to brands that are looking for people who does what you do. And my favorite method of all, the method that has brought me the best clients and the biggest amount of money, word of mouth. I know, word of mouth. It's when somebody recommends me to someone they know because they loved working with me so much that they just can't shut up about it. The tiny little problem with this method though, you can't control it. <laughs> you can't control it. Well, the only thing you can actually control is how well you do your job so that people will talk about that and not about how much you suck. But I might have a thing or two up my sleeve to keep the word of mouth going. So if you want to learn about those, let me know in the comments and I'll make a full length video about finding clients as a freelancer. So you've got everything you need now to start building your creative career and to make money as a creative freelancer. Never give up on your dreams. Keep learning, keep improving, keep putting the time, energy, money and effort into your dreams. Yes, it takes a lot of time, but it's so worth it. I would not be living on this beautiful island right now if I didn't start my creative freelancing journey. I am so grateful for my past self to be courageous enough and stupid enough and smart enough to do this. Don't forget that there is a giveaway of one year of free learning on Skillshare and a 30-day free trial of Skillshare is also waiting for you in the description under this video. Now watch this video to learn about the one annoying limiting belief that is keeping many creative people from making money. Or if you're feeling stuck in life right now and you need to make a breakthrough, watch this video right here. I will see you in my next one. Peace.